Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a landscape from one of the photos I took uh, at, during the plein air session I posted last week. Um, I'm going to start off with a watercolor pencil and I'm just going to sketch this kind of little path, which is the path I was walking down and I will, um, I'll share this photo on my blog. I'm going to exaggerate the path a little bit just so it's um, a little more interesting. And we'll have a bunch of bushes there, and we'll have kind of like just some trees back there, very lightly indicated. Now I want to have a couple of birch trees, and I know that's not very that's not very light, but the path is the real important thing here. Uh, I want to have a couple of birch trees, and I'm going to use my favorite technique for doing birch trees, which is the masking tape technique. And I'm just going to pull off a couple long pieces, and I'm going to tear them. And I like to do that because I just get a much more natural looking tree that way. Um, I save the little pieces that I tear off because um, I can usually kind of piece together some other trees from them. So this is basically just for the trunks. I try to get some nice long continuous pieces, but sometimes your tape doesn't want to tear as well as other times. So you just make a bunch of different little pieces like this. And I'll have some edges that have straight edges and some that are more rough. And basically I want to have, I think I want to have three trees kind of grouped together in a little cluster. I'll start with this big one first, and that will be my focal tree. And that, let me just give it a more blunt end there, and we'll stick that right there, right off the page. We'll do another one kind of next to it. Oh, I want to tear this down a little bit. I like to have little bends in the uh, in the trees. I think it looks good. This is going to prove. This is going to keep the weight of the paper. And then let's do another one. Uh, I want to rough up that edge here. I don't like to have too much of a straight edge. Actually, I'm wondering how well that's going to stick. Maybe I'll build it with a couple different pieces of tape. That's always an option. We'll get one kind of tucked in there going off the edge of the paper. That's That's good curve up and go around a bit. Batten it out the bottom a little bit. And yeah, I think that'll work out just fine. And that's all I've got to work, worry about for the tape. Now I want to use some masking fluid. Um, I'm shaking this up because I haven't used it in ages. And when I'm using masking fluid, what I like to do is, um, if I'm if I use that frequently, if I'm going to be using it a lot, I'll pour some into like an old jar, like a film canister, or great if you have any film canisters. But um, otherwise, I just work from the jar because I don't use it very often. So what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of soap on my brush. This is uh, just a travel size shampoo that I grabbed at a hotel at one one point, and I just keep it with my Masking fluid, so I always have soap to put on my brush. And the reason you do this is to protect your bristles, and that way you can wash out the masking fluid easily. Uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yes, you can, you know, use products to get the fluid out of your brushes, but hey, I'm just going to make it easy on myself. Now, I had a request in the C Critique Club, a group that I run over on Teachable, which anybody is welcome to join if they want to improve their. Um, their painting and they want to just kind of be in a group of like-minded folks that also want to improve their painting and one of the ladies that's in the group suggested that I do a painting of falling leaves and I thought oh that would be nice and then when I saw this photo that I had taken and some of the leaves were being blown off the tree I thought oh this might be just the perfect opportunity to um, to paint this sort of thing and I'm just gonna do a few dabs on the path too to give some like fallen leaves that are a little bit brighter but I'm using the masking fluid so that there'll be leaves that are caught by the light as they're falling. So they're going to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just doing dabs though, because really, if you've got something in motion, you're not going to see a lot of detail. 
Now, if you get too much on there and you change your mind, you don't want so much, you can remove the masking fluid before you start painting. Once it's dry, you can just roll it up. This is a piece of, this is a rubber cement pickup. It's like this um, uh, hunk of rubber that you can use to lift up the fluid really easily, or you can just rub it off with your fingers. But um, I think it's a little bit easier to use that. That way you don't have to worry about smearing any paint that you've put on there. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna wash my brush and let this dry. And when it's dry, we'll come back and we'll do our painting. Okay, our masking fluid is dry and I am going to start by wetting the top third of the paper. So, oh, you know what? Let's make sure we've pressed down our masking tape because we don't want to have any paint seeping under. If you do get a little paint seeping under, it'll just give you a little bit of a rough dark edge to the tree, which is fine because the, you know, the bark can do that. But um, you don't want that, you don't want too much of that going on or it could be just kind of problematic. And you can see as I go over any of the lines that I sketched in with my um, with my watercolor pencil, it gets a little kind of smooshed out, and that's good because that's that's what I wanted. I didn't want to have a huge uh, huge line there. I'm just gonna kind of feather off the the water that way. I'm gonna go and grab some ultramarine blue, and I'm using Turner watercolors, and you can find Turner watercolors at our sponsor Jerry'sArtorama.com. I'm also going to grab, and that's what ultramarine blue looks like right there. I'm also going to grab a little bit of cerulean because we got a little cerulean in our sky today. And we're going to just throw that here up at the top. And usually you have a little bit more ultramarine happening at the top and it kind of gets a little bit greener, a little more ceruleanish as you work down. So I'm going to kind of transition a little bit there. And I'm just going to pull that down, just kind of feather it off, let it fade off into the tree area. It's not going to bother anything. Um, I do like to make sure I have enough color in here, and I'm feeling like this might be a little bit too muted because I want to put some trees in. I mean, I want to put some clouds in. We're going to put some trees in too, but first, let's have some clouds in there. Uh, I'm just debating whether I want a little bit more blue at the top. I think that's good. You could go bluer if you wanted to, but that's in line with what the photo is doing. And I'm going to grab a paper towel, dry paper towel here, and I'm just going to lift off a few clouds, puffy, puffy cumulus clouds. Don't have any shading on these, just big, white, fluffy clouds. Now, if you want to learn how to paint landscapes better, I have a course, Watercolor Landscape Workshop, and I've got a 50% off coupon code in the video description if you want to check that out. So now the next thing we're going to do is start working in the trees, and these are trees that are far away, and we want them to be a little, like, kind of kind of uh, modeled because they're so far away. And that coupon code in the video description is going to give you 50% off the course. So, great way to learn at a discount. So I'm going to start by flicking some yellow here. This is gamboge. It's a warm yellow, so it's not going to be, it's not going to tend to go as green as say like a lemon or Hansa yellow light. It's okay if it greens up a little bit because these some trees have green leaves even in the fall. I like doing this because it gives me a really natural look. Now we're gonna go in with some yellow ochre. This is a number eight round. These are the mimic brushes that Jerry's Artorama sells. Um, I really like these because they behave like a fur brush but there's no animals being harmed, so I like that. I also want to concentrate a little bit of this kind of in the middle here. Draw the eye in with this warm color. There we go. I like that. I love yellow ochre. I feel like it does just magical things <laughs> to our to our paper. We'll do a little bit of um, take a little bit of vermilion. You can use vermilion, any warm red. Could be a cad red. Uh, could be scarlet, mix it in with some of that gamboge, and I'm just going to flick a little bit. Now I flick, for this technique, I'm just whacking my finger on the back of the brush, and that helps the spatters go down and not up onto my camera or all over my table. It helps me uh, direct them a little bit. A little bit. You can be a little more aggressive with it if you want, but if you're tapping down like that, your spatter should fall down. 
Now another thing that you can do, which is kind of handy, you just got to be careful not to get it too watery, but you can take an old toothbrush, and what I do is like, you know, if somebody throws away the toothbrush, you're done with it, um, throw it in the dishwasher, and then I throw it in my paint stuff. I also like save old toothbrushes for cleaning as well, because it is um, wonderful for cleaning. And I'm going to use olive, but you can use sap green, and I say depending on the brand. Like, I love Turner's Olive Green. It's much more natural looking than their sap green. Their sap green is very bright, kind of like Windsor Newton's sap green. So I like their olive green. I like the Sennelier's olive green. I like Windsor Newton's olive green because in those companies, their sap green is so vibrant that it's almost a little unnatural. Um, but sap green, you know, if you're if you're using M. Graham, go for the sap green. Uh, if you're using Daniel Smith, go for the sap green. And you know, once you find a color that works for you, you know, stick, you know, keep, you know, stick to it. That's how you develop your own palette. Now, the thing I love about this technique is that I do not have to worry about my leaves or my birch branches, my birch trunks, because they are covered. They are, they're protected, which is really, really nice. Uh, yeah, I like those colors I have going on there. I feel like I want a little bit of darkness back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take some more of that green. I'll say I'm olive green. I'm going to take some of the red. Now just be careful. Try not to get too much water when you're doing this. I'm just going to grab some of that red. And you can see it's getting a little watery. Uh, I'm going to grab a little ultramarine blue. A little more green. I'm just, I'll just wipe off my pans when I'm done. I don't want to take any more water than I have to. And I'm going to kind of spray right down here at the bottoms. Give it a little shadow. Right in there. I also want a little more blue. I'm going to go grab a little more ultramarine blue to add in there. Give us some distant foliage. All right, that's a neat mix. I think I want to keep some of that on my palette to use in a little bit. Okay, I want to get this path taken care of right off the bat. You can use um, any large brush. I think I'll go with a flat. And I am going to grab some, you can do burnt umber or burnt sienna. I think I'll grab the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to kind of throw in this little path here. And I put a little bend in the path rather than keeping it um, straight because I think it's a little bit more interesting to look at. And let's grab a little yellow ochre. Clean my brush. Add a little more water. That's a little, a little strong. Yellow ochre can be pretty strong. Oh, the paper I'm working on is Arches Rough. So if you see my brush skipping a little bit, it's not that my brush is too dry, it's just the rough paper is is uh, is grabbing that texture. Got a little path there. Now I can spatter on some leaves because we'd have leaves on our path and we'd have all these different colors from all the trees we've have that we have around. We'll do some I'll put a little bit more of that up in the sky too. Now I will need to wa like wipe down my mat here when I'm done. That's okay. We'll do some green. Such a nice day today. I took her a walk and oh, so pretty, but I think we're going to lose all of our leaves this week because we're supposed to get a really bad, uh, they call it actually nor nor'easter, but it's rain, so the snow, thank goodness, because it's going to be like two inches of rain. Um, so I think it might be kind of one of the last hurrahs for our, for our leaves, which is, I mean, it's good, it's good in the sense that like you can, you know, get things raked up before it gets too cold, but bad in the sense that all oh, these pretty leaves are all going to be down. Do some brown. Okay, now to make the path push back a little bit, I'm going to grab a little bit of that blue 
and just make with my dirty brown brush and I'm just gonna kind of throw in just kind of meet things up a little bit we can also do a little shading at the edge of the path with the blue and it's just it's a blue mix it's a muddy blue mix I took the blue on my brown brush all right so now I want to throw in some foliage that's going on happening around my tr my my uh Pass. I'm just going to grab the olive green and of course sap green if that's what you're that's what you're using. Use whatever green you've already been using. Throw in some of these little grasses. Dragging it through some wet paint too. That's fine. Now, uh, since we have this puddly paint here. And we know we want some little grasses at the edge of our path. What you can do is take, if you have a brush that has an aquarelle end, like this one does a lot of your, uh, these, those would be like your brushes with plastic handles. The Mimics have wooden handles, but you'll have some brushes with plastic handles. And you can go in, you can just kind of scrape in some little grasses around the path. Or you can use a piece of cut up credit card. Try not to uh, scrape off your masking fluid though. I don't think it will scrape off too easily but you know it could happen so just kind of be careful of that all right now i'm going to tip my board up a little bit because i'm getting some wicked glare because of how how wet that area is so hopefully that's going to help and then here i'm going to go with a little bit more of a yellow um a yellowier green i'm actually going to take some of that cerulean that cerulean blue because that's more of a uh, green undertone and I'm going to grab some of the gamboge. We'll see what we get with that. Probably won't be a super green but it's a little bit springier, a little bit lighter. And I'm going to throw some of that in here. And I mean, we're just doing a really, um, I'm going to grab a little bit of the olive too. We're just doing a, like a really easy going forest scene here. Now if I pick up my brush, my, if I pick up my paint really dry and I go over this wet area and the paint is kind of pasty on my brush, I'll get uh, I'll get individual blades of grass and that looks kind of cool. More yellow here at the edge and that will make it stand out a little bit more. I can do that same trick with the bevel edge of a brush or a credit card scraper and just kind of pull out some grasses and depending on how wet the paper is when I when I do it I might get little light grasses I might get some highlights I might get scratches in that look darker so I like it it's kind of darker up here it's lighter up here this gives me a little bit of contrast now over here I'd like to have some uh, kind of some more like bushes so what I'm going to try to do is just kind of lift up a little bit of texture in here so I can just put some bushes. I'm going to go with a bigger round brush, I think. Let's go with the number 12 round. And let's grab uh, some gamboge. Let's grab some olive green. Let's just throw some of that around here. Now I did like that cerulean mix. I'm going to grab some of that cerulean. It can help just define the space a little bit. And we can go back in after things are dry as well. Now I want something a little bit brighter with the olive, the cerulean. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's a pretty color. Let's do a little bit of that. Splash some of that on. And now let's add some, oops, that's not the same yellow I was using. Let's use some of the same yellow. You could go with a lemon yellow, but I haven't used it anywhere else, so I really don't want to put that in at this point. Uh, so we got the yellow, and we'll go back into the cerulean there. Get some of that in there. 
and do some yellow on its own as well. Let it mix on the paper because sometimes that gives us a really cool effect. Okay, now what I'm going to do is again go back in with this this brush and just give us a few little just a few little grasses in there. All right, at this point we need to let this dry and then we can remove our masking. Okay, I have let this dry. I let it air dry because masking fluid can be damaged if you um, if you heat dry it and it, if you use a heat tool to dry it and then it can stick to your paper permanently. Also, you don't want to let your masking fluid sit on the paper paper for a long time. I wouldn't let it sit for more than like a day. So um, definitely, I wouldn't start this project unless you know you can finish it in a reasonable amount of time. And then just to remove the leaves, I'm just going to, you can rub it with your fingertips, but I'm going to pick it up with this rubber cement pickup. And this will take a couple minutes, so I'm just going to do this off camera. And then we'll come back and we'll have all of these little bits of rubber cement, or masking fluid rather, removed. And I'll link all these products up in the video description, along with a coupon code to Jerry's Diorama, so you can get... A little bit of money off your non-sale items, and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I think we have got all of the masking fluid off. You just want to brush off any debris, and usually you can feel with your fingertips if there's any... Oh, going on the left up there. Usually I can feel because there'll be like a little bit of um of like a grippy feeling to the paper if you've got any masking fluid left. So I think I've gotten all of mine off. But if you're not sure, just run your fingertips across. If you feel any little, um, if you feel any bumps, then go ahead and just uh, lift them off. I'm actually gonna go with a smaller flat brush here and some clear water. And I'm going to start on this tree here that's the furthest to the left. If you are left-handed, you could start with the one on the right. I'm just going this way so I don't run my hands on any on any um, wet areas. And I'm just going to wet the tree here. And then I am going to mix up on my palette a gray. And I'm going to use ultramarine blue. And make up a good amount of this because you're going to use it for all the trees. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Or burnt umber, if that's the brown that you used. I probably could mix up more than that, but we'll see how far that gets us. And the more brown, the warmer of a gray you'll get, and the more blue, the cooler of a gray you'll get. I'm going a little more blue because it'll be a nice contrast to all the warm colors I have there. Then I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm going to pick up color on half the bristles. And let's see, it looks like the light's coming in from this way a little bit more, so I'm going to do my shading, the primary shading on the right side. And since this is a rough paper, I do have to kind of work it back and forth a little bit. If you're on a smoother paper, you could just kind of do that in one go, and I am going to use the chisel edge of the brush to help push that into the paper. And this tree goes off the edge, so I do put a, I do put a little bit of a shadow on the other side, but you can't really see it that much. Now I've got my credit card scraper, and I'm going to go and just throw some little uh, slightly curved uh, markings here, like birch bark has. And then I'm going to go in with a smaller round brush and some of that dark color, and just add some specks here and there. And it's also nice to practice on this little one off to the edge because if you mess up, then, you know, it's not a big deal and you get to kind of warm up on uh, a tree that doesn't really matter that much. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to the next one. And actually, I mean, you could wet this with, with whatever brush you have. And, I mean, in fact, if you don't have any flat brushes, or if your flat brush is too large, you can go in and wet this with a round brush. Like that. I like to take these trees right off the top of the paper because it just gives you a little bit of perspective and scale. And this is a rough paper. Your paper, your paint's not going to move as much on a rough paper, so 
you might not need to add quite as much water as I am. Scrape off any extra water, grab some of that nice dark color, and then I can also just apply it right with a brush right to the edge. Which is handy in case you're out painting on location, you might not have all your all your brushes. I'm going to give it just a very faint shadow on the other side. And that helps make it look round as well as give it some shading. And with this one, so because it's in the middle, you get a little more room to work, you can scrape and you can kind of squeegee with the edgy credit card scraper and that can give it some interesting shapes. You can even pick up some color from your palette with the credit card and kind of scribble it in and that helps uh, give you really random, uh, really random shapes as opposed to having it all, you know, uh, brush applied. It just gives you a little bit more of a random shape. If you need to define the edges a little bit, you can do that with your brush. Just keeping the right side of the tree a little bit darker just for shadow. And we'll pull some little branches off of this after we've got these painted in. And generally you have a little more shadow towards the bottom of the tree than the top because it's further away from the sun. It's more nestled in. So I want to get some of that color down there as well. Do that to the other guy over here. And this brush loves to skip on this paper because it's so rough and that's alright because it adds to the overall feel of the trees. And we'll do this last one either way with a round brush or a flat or I mean oops I got on the outskirts of that tree. Um, you, if you have a smoother paper, you can do this all in one stroke called side loading. And that works out really well too. And I go over uh, tree techniques a lot more in my watercolor landscape workshop course. So if you want more information on that, you want more training on that, you can find that there and save 50% off this month. All right, gonna add, oh, maybe I have just enough. the shading anyway. So in watercolor there's so many different ways to get the effect you're after. Some techniques will work better for you, some won't. You can really make it individualized. Do our scraping. Now you could use the end of the end of a brush too. I find that I get finer lines with the with a credit card though because it's a skinnier and get a skinnier um, edge a sharper edge to dig with you can use whatever is convenient for you I'm gonna mix up just a little bit more of that dark I will need some more for branches later as well but mix a little bit of that up here maybe a little more brown in that mix there we go. All right, that's good enough. I'm going to let that dry, leave that be, um, and we can go right in and we can paint our falling leaves. And I want our falling leaves to stand out, so I want them to be kind of a really pale yellow. So I'm taking that gamboge, which is, um, the Turner gamboge is pretty transparent. And mixing it with some clear water. Just really want to load that brush up with it because I can probably get most of... them painted with one brush load. I just kind of want that um, that feeling of the leaves dancing. This is uh, not a super realistic painting. Very impressionistic. And keeping all these leaves yellow because I think they stand out a little bit more against the ground. And then I can also do a spattering on of that color. 
which you don't have to do if you don't want to. Okay. Now we want to dry this, and we can dry this with a heat tool now because we've removed our masking fluid, and we'll put on our final details. Okay. I have gone ahead and just mixed up some pasty black. It was the ultramarine blue and the bright sienna. And I'm loading up this liner brush. See how long those bristles are? This is so nice because it holds so much ink. And what I like to do is just kind of go in and throw in branches. And this can give you a really pleasant look. It can give you this feeling of being um, like in the forest gives the viewer the feeling of being protected and um, nestled in. And I just really, really love that. You, when you're walking in the, in the woods, in the fall, everything is so peaceful and beautiful. It's a little gift from nature before they dump all the snow on us and we're sad for months and months. I need to get a winter hobby. I need to find a way for winter to be less depressing. <laughs> if you got any great winter hobbies, uh, let me know. I mean, obviously, I, I do a lot of indoor things, but I mean, like, I need to, I don't know, enjoy being outside, which is something I don't do in the winter. I love being outside in the summer, preferably at a beach, someplace warm and sandy. But I've never been a fan of being outside in the cold. You can go in and throw any little marks. I apologize if you can hear that noise in the background. Um, it is the water pump. OG fans of the Frugal Crafter know all about the, my water pump woes. I typically like to do my watercoloring upstairs in my office, but we are going to be undergoing a renovation and uh, everything has to come out of there. And it's another reason I'm bummed about the winter. It's so darn cold down here. <laughs> I'm like, I've got two sweatshirts on <laughs> and it's only October. Uh, yeah, a rough winter. <laughs> Sometimes I'll look and I'll, if I see a dark spot on the tree, I will use that as a guide to where I want to put my branches. I have way more branches than I have about my reference photo, but I like them. You don't have to put so many though. It's up to you. And there are still some leaves on these trees too. So we're going to paint a few leaves on the trees while we're at it. Now it looks super dark, but um, the it's not going to be as dark. Once it dries, those little marks that we just put on there are going to dry a lot lighter. I want to put that branch from that tree kind of going behind them all. Okay, while I'm at it with a liner brush, I'm going to grab some uh, olive green. Let's switch some more water in there, so add a little yellow to that. There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to throw in just a few little grasses. Now, uh, even though liner brush holds lots of water, it still has a hard time moving on the rough paper. And I'm going to grab that flat brush, grab some of that dark gray, add it to some of the brown on my palette. Just kind of, I like to use the colors I've already been using. Now I do want to go around any leaves that I see though, because I want I don't want to lose those nice bright leaves. So if I do come across a leaf, because that's falling, I just want to go around it. But I want it, I want my lines to kind of continue as if the leaf isn't there. As if we had like painted it and there was still masking fluid there. And get some shadows, just some little darkness in the path. You can't paint every detail or you lose a lot of the feeling of being there. I'm dragging in some of this cut dark color around the edges too because that's going to help frame it and give it a little bit of a um, vignette feeling. It's a nice warmer color that I have down here. It's got a little red in it. 
that's going to draw the eye forward a little bit and still make our help us make our frame adds nice direction through the painting okay so for the tree we've got little orange leaves on this birch tree and I'm just gonna go grab this number eight round. I'm gonna mix up some orange. I gotta clean a little spot though, cause look at that, I have like, you filled up that whole area of my palette. Wipe out a little bit here. This is just a, I just got a plain regular old palette, um, 48 pan palette. And then I put a combination of, it holds 48 half pans. I put a combination of full and half pans. And that's how I have my Turner watercolors. I did have them in loose half pans with magnets on the bottom, but they just moved around a little too much for my liking. I prefer this method, but um, you can do whatever you like. So I got this nice bright orange, gamboge, and a little bit of that, always reusing the colors that we've already used. And I'm just gonna just dab. I'm gonna dab anywhere around these little branches here. Now if we're using cadmium colors, that would actually work really well because cadmiums will um, are a little bit opaque. So even if you have stuff kind of behind them, they'll still show up well. Try not to be too fussy with it you'll get a much better effect. If you had a blunt round, that would work really well too because it would give you a little bit rounder. Like you could use a deer foot stippler or any sort of specialty brushes you have. I'm not grabbing a specialty brush today because I don't know how many of you guys would have them. A round will certainly do the trick. But if you had an old worn out round brush, that would work even better. These uh, mimics do keep their point really well, which is a good mark in a brush, but that's why I say don't throw away your old brushes because they will come in handy for things like when you need to do foliage or other effects like that. All right, I want to show you another trick here before we go. And that would be sponging. And what I'm going to do is just grab a sponge here. I've got, I just keep, um, I keep all these interesting old tools which I talk about in my workshop. I have rubber bands bundled together. I have a variety of different little sponges. And I'm gonna do a little sponging and that will give me a really natural look. I'm going to need to get a little more paint though. And what I think I'll do, you gotta wet your sponge before you use it. And then you bring out the extra, otherwise you're gonna just soak your paper and you don't wanna do that. But if you don't wet your sponge, it's not really gonna help you move the paint off of, your, off of the sponge. So I've got it um, damp. And I'm actually gonna, just going to use this brush here to brush some color onto it. So I'm just using this flat brush for that. Actually, I'll pick, I'll pick up any extra with that. Dab that on there and then just pick up any extra. And then I can just kind of stamp. And this is going to fill in a lot of those little leaves I don't feel like painting all on there. And it will help me get that little frame effect up here around the top. So it's kind of like you're nestled. You're walking through this, uh, you're walking through this lovely little slice of heaven here. And you're being protected by all those beautiful leaves. Let's get a little bit more orange going on here and do a little bit more. Mm, I like that. Oh, I love it. I love seeing the paint just kind of hit a little bit of paper that's got a little bit of wetness to it and then it just like blooms and blossoms. So pretty. Alright. Oh, I want to taper that. It got too much solid area there. So I'm going to do his taper. I do want to kind of like tap it right off to the edge. I like that idea of the of the blossoming. I'm going to do a little bit more flicking of yellow. A little flicking of red. Hopefully it's not going on my camera. 
And then if I want to add any details, I can do that. You could also go in with paint pens if you wanted to. In fact, I'm going to show you something here. Um, I have a variety of paint pens. They are very handy if you like to do um, highlights or anything like that. I think I will use a little bit because you still do get some springy greens this time of year. Oops, I haven't started that one. Of course, I picked the one pen that out of like a hundred here that I have not started. Here we go. And I can just throw in some grasses. And the neat thing about this is that I can drag them over like the shadows into the path because they're going to be a little opaque. And this is, uh, this one here is Mikador, uh, very similar to the extra fine Posca pens. They have a plastic nib, these extra fine ones. So I'm not going to hurt them by going on top of this rough paper. If it was a uh, felt tip nib pen, it might kind of wear down the nib. So if you get one of these hard plastic tip pens or you use like maybe ink and a dip pen, then you you don't have to worry about that because it's not, that's not going to hurt it. I'm going to do a little bit up here. I don't want to do too much because that's getting further away from the viewer. And sometimes what I'll do is if I'm getting further away from the viewer, I'll just do a little smudgy with my finger. Oh, I really like that. I feel like that really adds quite a bit. Um, if you want to do anything to your um, to your leaves, you can. Of course. Oh, I think this one might be like, my goodness, am I picking every pen I've never opened? <laughs> I think this one's open. Yeah, this is good. Uh, you know, if you want to go in, you can add a little detail to your leaf. You can give them a little stem, which I think is really fun because you can give them a little bit of movement and direction, like they're dancing in the wind, and that's the, uh, that is kind of the effect that I wanted where these, these leaves just kind of floating and dancing and falling and like a symphony. And you know, it's just a few little, uh, few little dabs here and there. I'm going to throw in some of this yellow in the really close grasses. That'll just give us a little bit of a uh, perspective. It'll bring it closer to the viewer. Ooh, I'm liking that. Uh, and I think I want to do maybe a little stippling with my leaf colors here. Maybe add a little brown to that. So because once the leaves fall on the ground, they they dull. They get um they get a little more brown. So I'm just gonna do a little a little stippling on the path. Just dab dab dab. And actually, we could do that with our toothbrush. That would work out really well. Oh my gosh, this video is going to be so long, guys. I, I hope you like it. I'm trying to stop apologizing for the length of my videos, but it's very, it's a hard habit to break. So I'm just going to give us a little bit of something, something there. Oh, I think that's nice. And then... Let's grab this little shader brush here. Add any little shadows in that we want. Uh, the paint pen will resist the watercolor a little bit because it's an acrylic paint. So you don't have to worry about going around those little grasses that you just drew, which I think is a lovely thing. Oh, you can see the watermark there, the arches watermark on that paper. Sometimes I like to use a rough paper just because it gives you a little bit more texture. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back, take off the tape, and see what we got. So I was thinking that I wanted a little more contrast here. So I've got this ebony watercolor pencil, and what I'm gonna do is just, there were some areas I was thinking, geez, I just wish I could push that contrast a little bit, and that's what I'm gonna do. So in there, I'm also gonna go in around the base of this tree. Now it's up to you whether you want to add water to this or not. I mean like you could do this with regular colored pencils but um, I was just thinking that I want to set these trees out a little bit and I want to push back 
the background a little bit. There. Sometimes it just takes a little bit and also maybe to find a little bit at the edge of the path. And then to make those, make my little yellow leaves pop a little bit more. And just a little bit down here for framing. I like to, if I'm going to add a whole new thing, a whole new color, a whole new media like I am here, I want to do it in a few places so it doesn't, so it's not um, out of left field. And I don't have to add water to every spot either because like in these bushes here I like how I can see some white where my my paint didn't like uh where it skipped over the truth of the paper I like that so I'd want to I thought probably won't liquefy this area but some of these areas I'm like just like you know I need a little contrast and I think that's going to do the trick actually I want to be I want it to like look kind of inviting and mis mysterious can it be mysterious and inviting I think so And then just gently with, oops, is there color on that? Need too much water on that. Uh, no, I'm just gonna kind of, ooh. You gotta be careful with it, that's really dark. Not much water at all, just a, just a little bit, in fact. Or none, just, or you can just leave it dry. Only add the water if you wanna darken it, cause it's gonna look darker once you get the water on. There. It does give it a little bit different of an attitude. I like that. I'm going to leave it for now. You can always go back and add more, uh, which is a great thing about your painting. You can do whatever the heck you want with it because it's your world. And now I'm just going to remove the tape so we can see our lovely finished picture. This is fun to paint. It's fun to work from your own photographs too because you'll have the memory of visiting wherever it was where you went and painted, which is nice because then it will you know, you'll, you'll have those, those senses, you'll remember things that aren't necessarily shown in your photograph. And um, it's also a little bit more meaningful because you've been there. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, the supplies that I'm using today are from our sponsor, jerrysartorama.com. You can find them linked up in the video description as well as a coupon code to save 50% off my watercolor landscape workshop if you want to learn a little bit more about landscape painting and do some more projects with me learn how to pick trees and rocks and all that jazz uh it's a lot of fun and that's it for today we'll see you next time for another tutorial Bye bye